In this video, we're going to be testing out the best-selling solder seal connectors on Amazon. We'll see how well they work. I'll show you what they do and don't do, as well as give you a few tips. The connectors you see right here are typically used for automotive or marine applications. Let's get started. The kit you see right here has 160 pieces and it's designed to be used with 10 gauge all the way to 26 gauge, right over here. The way the connector is made is using a heat shrink tube and over here you can see there's a band and another band that's an adhesive. So as you're heating this up, it's going to shrink, melt the adhesive. The adhesive is going to make a watertight seal around the insulation of the wire. And in the center where the conductors have been stripped and twisted together, you have this low melting point tin based alloy. It's going to melt down and it's going to encapsulate the connection between the two conductors. In order to melt that ring, you're going to require at least 150 degrees Celsius or 300 degrees Fahrenheit. What I really like about this connector is the level of flexibility that it has after you heat shrink. You'll be able to put a nice curve on it. It's not going to be stiff like the crimp type connectors that you see right here. Even though the connection is a good one, it's not the same as using a soldering iron because you're able to use the soldering iron to get the conductors extremely hot, hot enough to get the solder to flow into the individual strands of wire. You're not going to have that with this connector. You're simply going to coat the outside of the connection to make it a very secure one so the wires cannot untwist. The first step to using one of these connectors, you want to take the wire and when you cut it, you're going to strip off about 12 millimeters to 16 millimeters and you want to make sure the wire is bright and shiny. Many times when you're working on a car or a boat, when you cut the wire and you strip it, it's going to have a very dull color to it due to oxidation. So if you do have a problem like that, what you need to do is take the wire, you want to fan out the conductors, and just take a single edge blade and just scrape over it. Go all the way around and you can fan out the conductors if you want each strand. And you can see you got a nice shiny surface there. You're going to do the same for the other side. Hold the blade at an angle. You don't want to cut the wire. You just want to drag it over it. Now you're ready to go. Once the wire is clean, you're going to take the connector and you're going to slide it all the way over. Pull it all the way down out of the way so you can work on this connection. You take the two wires and you want to twist them together very carefully. Make sure you put a really good twist on them. I do not believe in intertwining them. You can take the strands from one wire and jam them into the strands of the other. Usually it doesn't work out so well. Some of the strands will be popping out of one side of the conductor and they all will not be intertwined very nicely. So just take them, twist them together so it looks like what you see right here when you're finished. With that connection made, you're now going to slide the tubing very carefully over that spliced area and you want to center the ring directly over the splice. Now to make sure the connector is done properly there's a few ways that you can do it. The right way is to use a hot air gun like you see right here. When I use this I set the temperature to 200 degrees Celsius or 392 degrees Fahrenheit. You can go just a little bit lower than that but you don't want to go higher because you may overheat the connector. A long time ago on my channel I showed you this mini heat gun. I did test it for these connectors and it works but it takes a very long time because the temperature output for this heat gun is around 150, 160 C or 300 to 310 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's going to take you much longer using this than using this one here. If you have used these connectors in the past you would know that you can also use a lighter and if you do it properly, you're going to end up with a very good job. If you do it wrong, which is very easy to do, you can damage the insulation of the wire or the connector. I'm going to show you in the video using the heat gun and the lighter. Let's do this one, it's ready to go. You see it connecting very tightly there. Go over the center, get that air out and move this way. And you can see the band with the adhesive. Like I said, you don't want to go too hot with your gun, otherwise you'll damage the insulation. So now with that looking good, 
Now we can concentrate on the center. Just keep rotating it. And then that ring, there it goes. A little bit more. And you can see that is finished and it looks beautiful. Let's let this cool and then I'm going to cut it open and show you what I mean the way the solder flows over the wire but not into the strands. And after it cooled you can see how nice it came out. Very tight against the wire. And if you go to bend it, that's what I like about these connectors. Look at this. See you can make a nice bend in it which you can't do if you're using the crimp type connector. But you can see over here as you're moving it there's an airspace now that was created and that opened up but the connection here with the glue is what I'd like to see let me take the single edge blade cut this straight over the top and see if it's easy to actually peel this off if it is that means the adhesive isn't the greatest so let's take a look all right so let's grab it over here hopefully it stays in view of the camera pretty good I'm going to pull on this. I want to see if it comes off easy right there. All right, so it did separate fairly easily, the adhesive. Let's see here. Yeah, see, it didn't really stick that good. It made a connection. And you can see on here by looking at it, it flowed over the outside here on top. You can see some copper there. What I want to do now is I'm going to cut right here, and I'm going to show you what the end looks like just so you can see that it's only coating the outside it's not flowing in to each one of the strands and I did try some liquid no clean rosin flux on here just to see if it would make a difference and it makes no difference the reason why it makes no difference is because you can't get this connection hot enough with this plastic in the way so it's always going to end up with just a shell over that twisted section and right here you can see when I made the cut in that connection that there's no solder in those copper conductors just surrounding it. You can also see that the low temperature alloy does not bond to the wire. There's a little space right over here. Same way, center it. And now I'm going to take the lighter and just very carefully move it back and forth. You want to keep the flame moving. Don't keep it in one spot too long or you will damage the wire and the insulation. There it's flowing right now. Look at that. Let me cut this connection open also just to take a look at the inside. Alright, so the adhesive really doesn't stick so well to the wire. And I've noticed that with other brand connectors as well. Let's pull this off. Okay, let me cut this one too. And you can see the same exact results using the lighter, copper color in the center where there's none of that low temperature alloy. It's all around the outside. Based on a previous testing video where I tested soldered and unsoldered connections, I can tell you that this connection is going to be low resistance. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate, thumbs up, and share. Thanks for watching.